Today we're going to try something a little different. I'm not going to show you any projects. There's going to be no coding. Instead, we're going to take a look at this. This is one of those Atari uh, flashback things. Uh, this is a centipede theme. Um, but there's also 20 more games, and we'll try this out. So my friend Brian uh, picked this up at Bed Bath & Beyond for 6 or $7. So thank you, Brian. And let's start opening this up. Alright, so there's directions. Real men don't read directions, so we'll throw that out. This here looks like uh, the dongle, I think. The controller, of course. So, um, I'm going to try to figure this stuff out and get back to you. Okay, I need to confess that I did read the directions. Um, so this was a little stubborn, but this does come off, and this reveals um, an HDMI port. So this connects to an HDMI port on your TV, and then they provide this little, uh, like, USB cable, micro USB, I think, and you plug it in here on this end, and then the other end you throw it into an available uh, USB port on your TV, and we should be good to go. The other thing that we need to do is install um, AAA batteries in this controller. So those two things and we should be off to the races. So I was able to set everything up and find some batteries mm. and it starts up with a menu. So the first game listed on the menu is Centipede. You have to turn on the controller. Anyway, let's uh, start with Centipede. So apparently I have to press A to get it started. So right now I could tell you that I suck. <laughs> also it seems like the controls are very uh, sensitive or awkward. It's hard to explain. The other thing is um, not really an old arcade historian but I'm not convinced this is uh, the official arcade version of Centipede. Anyway, I'm not a huge fan of this game yet. Okay, 3D Tic-Tac-Toe, I tried to try it. I don't know how it works, and it's not going to make for a very exciting part of this video. So let's try Air-Sea Battle. So in this game, there's not much to it. It looks like you uh, either shoot with the left hand side or right hand side. Bowling. Okay, so this game is straightforward, I guess. Whether it's fun is another matter altogether. Okay, so it's occurred to me that we have to uh, increase the pace a little bit. 
So I'm just going to show just a little snippet of each of these video games. This one is Desert Falcon. So this appears to be a flying game. We have to also control the elevation. And uh, it's very difficult because of the elevation control. Dodge them. This is a peculiar game where you have to like press up or down, like, or, or so it would seem. Anyway, uh, not really a great game. All right, so we're starting Fatal Run now. So yeah, Fatal Run is a racing game. To press up in order to accelerate. I guess it's kind of a little bit like pole position. Uh, took some damage there. This game is a little more fun. And I died. Alright, so I'm playing golf now. The thing that's a little difficult here is to try to figure out how to turn around and stuff. So anyway, this is golf. So as you can see, not every game on this collection is a gem. This game is called Human Cannonball, and uh, you can see a cannon right there. And as you can see, uh, a human gets shot out of the cannon, hence its name. So I think that's the idea, yes, in order to land the human into that uh, platform. What this emphasizes is just how simple some of these Atari 2600 games really were. So now I'm going to play Millipede. Um, I believe that's a sequel to Centipede. So this game should be more of a showcase kind of game. So yeah, this game is not too bad. Ah! Doesn't mean I'm good at it. But yeah, in this collection, this is uh, probably one of the better ones. We're gonna skip over Miniature Golf. I played it earlier and wasn't very impressed, and you'll have to take my word for it. Next, we'll try uh, Radar Lock. So in this game, you have to kind of get the other aircraft in your sights, and then you could uh, basically shoot them down. Actually, I don't mind this game. So far, one of the better games. I made an attempt at playing Save Mary, uh, couldn't figure it out. So uh, we'll skip ahead to Sprint Master. All right, so this looks like it's one of those, uh, this looks like it's one of those racing games. I'm uh, the red guy and you have to forgive me uh, while I figure out the controls here. Never been good at these kind of games. Third person racing games, I guess. Maybe you can call it that, I don't know. Anyway, it looks like I'm driving drunk. But yeah, I, I could see some people actually liking this game once you get the hang of it. So maybe, maybe a decent game.
at least by the standards of the rest of the collection. The Sword Quest games, for some reason there's three of them. Um, I can't figure them out. I've since read that it was some kind of ill-fated uh, Atari contest. Um, again, uh, if you're interested in it, I guess YouTube it um, on a different channel, but uh, for the sake of video, this video we're going to skip this over. So we will try Tempest though. So I've heard of Tempest, but uh, I don't have a lot of experience playing it. So forgive me if I suck. So anyway, that's Tempest. So to round the list off, we have uh, two uh, games in the Yars Revenge series. The original Yars Revenge and Yars Return. And I'm not going to play both, but I'll play the original. Yara's Revenge, and maybe this game uh, makes the whole collection worthwhile, at least in my opinion. That was close. And that makes it all worthwhile. <laughs> yeah, for me this is uh, this is my favorite game on this collection by far. So yeah, uh, is this a good buy? I don't know, I guess kind of marginal. Definitely not at its regular $24 cost. That's what it costs here in Canada. Uh, for 6 or $7, I think it's okay, depending on if there's uh, certain games that you like. If you're a big Centipede fan, obviously uh, 6 or $7 is probably okay for this. And in my case, uh, The Yard's Revenge.